Hi, this is James with International Auto Parts, and today we're going to be discussing how to rebuild your drive shaft, all the different components necessary to do so, and some common remedies for some issues that, that pop up on the drive shafts. Uh, here I've got drive shaft out of an Alfa Romeo Spider, and you can see this one is pretty well worn. Uh, the problems with this particular drive shaft is most notably the center support is bad. Um, other problems that you can encounter on these drive shafts is cracked flex joints, which would be here. This one is actually in pretty good shape. Um, what you're looking for is either cracks or chunks missing out of it that'll cause an imbalance and cause a vibration. The other thing is your U-joints. And what you're looking for on that is excessive play. You should be able to grab both sides of the yoke and push them against one another from side to side and fore and aft, and you shouldn't feel any play. Now this particular U-joint's in pretty good shape, and so it doesn't have any play whatsoever. In order to replace these parts, uh, we'll start off with the center support. In order to get to that, we're going to need to take the drive shaft in half. Just uses these four bolts around the circumference here in order to secure it. Before removing the drive shaft from the car or disassembling the two halves, it's a good idea to mark the, two, the halves of the drive shaft so that you can maintain the factory balance. I'm doing this with a pencil here, but more effective ways are using a center punch to make marks on both sides of the flanges, or also just using a bit of paint, like model paint, in order to create the stripe. This pencil is a very temporary and will not last very long once the part is out of the car. Once the drive shaft has been taken into half, that exposes this nut here on the end, and that is what holds on this yoke, which is what keeps center support in place. Once you remove this nut, this comes off, and that'll expose uh, the bearing and the slingers here. In order to actually remove the bearing from the drive shaft, you'll need to use a hydraulic press or some other sort of large bench vise in order to press the bearing off of the drive shaft. If you don't have access to these tools, you can usually take it to your local shop and for, they'll do it for an hour or two's worth of labor. This is the drive shaft support, and you can see this is just the center hole where the bearing fits into. It goes in from this side, like so. It is a press fit, so you will need some type of press or large vise in order to compress this into its home. And this is the snap ring that will secure the bearing in place. Um, typically, you'll need to trim the ends of it down here so that it can compress enough to be able to fit into the center support and retain the bearing. Moving on to the second half of the drive shaft, this is where we get into our U-joints. This is one of them here. You can remove the cap. It's just small needle bearings inside. Uh, what you'll want to do is, once again, you'll need a press, and if you remove these snap rings, you can drive the U-joint out of its yoke, and we've got one here partially assembled. So this is what the new U-joint will look like inside of the old yoke. Um, once that is in, you put the circlips back in again, and it's ready to be installed onto the drive shaft. If you didn't want to go through all of the U-joint installation or your drive shaft is damaged, we also sell complete new rear drive shaft sections, which will just bolt in place. Uh, check the bolt size on your particular drive shaft. Uh, throughout the years, there were variations. There, the GTVs and early Spiders were typically 8 millimeter, and later Spiders are 9 millimeter. So please check your bolt size when ordering. Um, once you have replaced the U joints and the center support, you then would want to put your new flex disc on the front, which I have here. This flex disc has this band around the outside of it to keep it compressed while you're installing it. You don't want to cut this band until it's installed and everything is tight and that'll allow the flex joint to expand out and it'll be ready to, to hit the road. Um, they can be very difficult to install if you cut that band beforehand. <clears throat> I'm going to show you now. We've got a finished drive shaft that I rebuilt myself. And this is it. There's a color difference in the center support just due to different stock. They, they're exactly the same. It's just, this one's in black and this one's CAD plated. Uh, we've got the new U-joints installed on both ends. Got a new center support. The slingers are able to be reused. They're just a metal disc that keeps uh, dirt and debris out of the bearing. So you can usually reuse those. If yours are missing, we do carry those as well. 
And since this has not gone on the car yet, I haven't put the flex joint on the front end. And that's basically all there is to it to uh, rebuild a drive shaft.